Hey, what's going on? It's Joseph here, architectural designer, content creator, and insane coffee addict. Today, we're gonna jump into creating a portfolio. Maybe you're a high school student trying to apply to architecture school, or just trying to get a quick portfolio out. Uh, today, we're using a super accessible tool, Google Slides, and I'm gonna take you through the reasons why you need a portfolio, how you can make one, and the end output. How do you present it? So. First, let's grab a coffee and then let's dive into it. All right, now that I got my coffee, let's talk portfolios. Why do you need a portfolio? So you're a high school student looking to apply to architecture school, or you're in architecture school and you're looking for an internship. Uh, let's start with the first one. You're in high school, you're looking at colleges. The same way that colleges require you to have a certain GPA in high school to get into certain programs, it applies similarly to architecture schools, to the architecture college itself. They wanna see what skills do you already have? What are you coming into the program with and how they can help you build your current skills? Are you a good drawer? Can you sketch? Can you paint? Did you take drama? Did you take photos? Are you a ceramicist? Do you like to create 3D animations, video work? All those types of things. It can all go into your portfolio. That was one of the biggest questions and concerns that I had when I was trying to put together my portfolio. I didn't know what the hell a portfolio was, to be honest. And so I had to ask a bunch of people. And because of that, to, I didn't have the resources to really know what it was that I was looking for at the time. And so I didn't get into the architecture program my first year of college uh, because my portfolio was lacking. It wasn't turned in on time and it wasn't what I needed it to be. So what I did was any of the art courses that I took in high school and any of the things that I did outside of school. I scanned all of my sketches, took photos of the sculptures and things that I was putting together, uh, took photos of my paintings and I brought those in. I even went out and took photos and used those photos in my portfolio as well. Um, and those were pretty last minute. <laughs> the photographs that I took, they weren't anything special, but it showed that I had an intention of trying to create and trying to use a new medium to me, which was the camera, taking photos. Um, so all of these, th these things, collect them, uh, try to take high quality photos and scans of them. And you're gonna wanna bring those into your Google Slides template or your portfolio, however it is that you decide to, to create your portfolio, and that's what you want to present. So that was number one, what the heck is a portfolio? Now let's jump into number two, which is actually putting one together in Google Slides. So we're gonna open up Google Slides right now. Um, so what you do is open up a blank document, and let's jump right into it. So. When putting together your portfolio, you really want to think about the size of your portfolio. Uh, I'm in the US, so what I'm going to show you guys how to do is to create a, a letter size page layout, which is 8.5 by 11, and uh, we're going to do it horizontal. So let's go to File, Page Setup, and right now it's set to widescreen, which is your computer screen. We want to print it at 8.5 by 11, so we're going to click the carrot and we're gonna go to custom so the first number is your width the second number is your height so the width we want that to be 11 the height 8.5 apply and this is in inches by the way so let's make a couple pages so the first page what you're gonna want it to be is to be your cover page do you have a really cool image of your artwork your photograph a sculpture even that fits well for the background, or you can also keep it really simple and just do a solid color. One of the things that you have to think about though is if you're printing eight and a half by 11, do you wanna print 
and bleed to edge. What bleed to edge is, is you fill the entire eight and a half by 11 with a solid image, or do you leave the slight white border around this? <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, I'm about to jump into a template that I actually created. It's my Archie Notion product, which is a digital resource that I created for people to be able to download. And I'll have the link down below. You can purchase it right now. Uh, and so I went ahead and created a template for you if you so choose. So this is my cover page. The whole goal of this was keeping it very simple and minimalistic and clean, right? So get your portfolio, you're looking at it, first thing you see is portfolio, that's what it is. I stylized it a little bit, left period there, but one of the things that you might want to do is add the date 2021 or whatever year it is to let people know that that's when that portfolio was made. Uh, not super essential, but something that could help. Up top, your name. Who are you? Who's this portfolio coming from? And maybe even your contact information. Where are you located? How can you be reached? Your phone number, your email, maybe even your website. So the second page, what we have to think about is, are you printing it again? Or is it just gonna be a digital portfolio that someone will click, click the link to, sorry about that, and just read that way? So right here, I have it set up so that you print. So this white blank page is actually the back of your cover page. So we're gonna want that to be blank anyway. Now the first page of actual content, for me, I suggest it being your table of contents. Let us know what page your About Me section is on, your Project 1, Project 2, Project 3, and Project 4. What pages are those? And even a little title underneath it that says, or description that tells people what they plan to see. Is it a painting, sculpture, or even a ceramic project? When it comes to your portfolio, put whatever it is that you're doing. So if you're in high school, did you take any art classes? Photo, photography, video, animation, any of those types of things, scans, high quality scans and high quality photographs will really help out. Uh, make sure to save those, archive them, and you're gonna wanna bring them into this file right here. So next up, in this template, I created two About Me pages, one with a photograph and one without. Some people wanna put a picture to your document, your portfolio, and others don't really care for that. So for this example, you know, you can have a headshot, keep it very professional and clean, and then underneath it, your name. Maybe you even have a title. If you're in high school, you might not have a title, but you can put candidate for bachelor's of architecture degree. Or if you're actually in school already and you're applying and creating this portfolio for a job, then you put designer, architecture student, whatever it might be. Below it, put it back in there, your contact me section your email, your phone number, your website, however it is that they need to get in contact with you. That's gonna be probably key because they need to know who it is they're reaching and who it is they're looking at their portfolio. Uh, to the right over here, it's space for text. So maybe a little short blurb about you. Who are you? Why are you a good candidate for this architecture program? What it is that maybe you've done that makes you stand out? And even down below, a short resume. What school did you go to? What year did you graduate? What did you do as an extracurricular activity? Whatever it is, those things that you added to your college resume and application could even apply here as well. So this is what the other option of the About Me page looks like. Very text heavy up top and down below at the bottom right corner, like I said again, put your contact information. Now, when creating this portfolio, don't be afraid to have some white space. When you come to this spread right here, you're opening the book up and you see on the left side, a black bleed to edge page. And then on the right side, something very simple that says painting. Something that starts to identify all of the images that you're about to see. I find this super important and super helpful. Uh, it really breaks up your portfolio and lets people know what it is they're gonna be looking at. So this is the first project type. We're gonna keep it super simple here. The same font style, we're using it all throughout. It's either gonna be bold or regular, right? When it comes to font colors, you can't go wrong with black. This template, we use a dark gray color, almost like a charcoal color. 
something that gives it a slight detail, something that stands out a little bit. And we save the black and white text only when it's really important. So here we have the bold project title. Throw the name out there. What is your project project's name? Below it, the project type. Is it a painting? Is it a charcoal sketch? Is it a painting, an oil painting, acrylic painting, watercolor painting, whatever that may be, throw that in here. Also, let us know the dimensions, the media. Those types of things really help put scale to these photos. Then you have a project description. Throw your description in there. And remember, 12 point font is very typical for US pages whenever you're writing a paper. So maybe make it stand out a little bit more. Right here, I'm using a 14 point font for the description and keeping it nice and concise. I'm not too worried about the white space down here. I think it lets my artwork breathe to the right. But right below the description, I have the date. When was your art created? And maybe even a recognition. Did you win something when you were in high school? Did you go to state? Did you qualify for something? Did it help you get a scholarship? Now here are a couple image layouts that I want to show you. This, this image is bleed to edge and makes it really stand out. So maybe your important big art pieces um, or whatever it is that you're bringing into your portfolio does something like this. It takes up that space and eliminates the white space around it. Then you move all your text over to the left. Or you take up the entire page with just one image. Something that's very curated looking. Something that makes that image stand out and says, look here, this is important and I'm dedicating an entire page to it. Or another option is maybe you have multiple views of a sculptural piece that you have. You want to zoom in and show the detail of one of the images, but then the next two zoom out, show a different angle. And then the next three, another angle, who knows? Maybe there are sketches, thumbnail sketches even of the exact same thing. And you start to show your process of how you got to the final product. Scrolling down, we have a couple other image layouts that you might be able to choose. The cool thing is, if we go over to file, actually, yeah, sorry, view guides, you wanna show guides. These are gonna really help you lay out all of your images and your text and keep them very consistent all throughout. If you're looking at my guides, it looks a little hectic, but let me break them down for you. You have your two main guides in the center, you little crosshairs. Those break up and even out the pages. Then on the left, you have two guides. One of them, I have it at half inch, and then the other one, I have it at three quarters of an inch. The reason why the three quarter of an inch border is there is so if you're binding your portfolio, you leave a little space for the binding to actually happen and you don't ruin your portfolio and the text that appears. On the right side, I have my images lined up to the half inch guide. That's gonna give it a nice little breathing room that'll really help. Something like this, you have your nice white border all around, or something like this. What I wanna highlight here is the white space in between all the photos. The same way we use the guides to keep a consistent border of white all around, we wanna do the same thing with these slivers of white space in between the images too. Be really conscious about how you lay out your images and use those guides. Keep the same spacing throughout, not just on one sheet, but on the entire portfolio if you're gonna be doing something similar to this. Coming to the end here, wrap up the last project with a real emotional image, something that takes up the entire page, bleeds to edge everywhere. It, it really rounds things out, right? And then on your final page, throw your contact information in there. Make sure you have it at the beginning and at the end. That way no one mistakes whose portfolio this is and they know how to contact you. Uh, so when sending it out to print, I recommend going to your local print shop. It might be Staples, Office Depot, FedEx, Kinko's, whatever it is, look at their binding options. Something nice and clean is probably gonna be your best bet. A clear cover on top with maybe a hard plastic covering at the back. Something to give your portfolio a little bit of weight and rigidity is gonna go a long way, especially when you hand it to someone. You're like, wow, this is very professional and clean looking. Lastly, don't forget to check out the download that I have below. Use 
the discount code YouTube to get 50% off. Originally it's $10, get it for $5, have a template to start out with. Something real clean and minimal that, you know, it'll save you time. But if not, jump into Google Slides and create your own portfolio. Let me know how that goes. Leave a comment down below and definitely like and subscribe if you found some value in this video. I'm gonna create a series around portfolios because this one's guided more towards you as a high school student trying to apply into architecture school. Next, you have to create a new portfolio if you're applying for a job, even a new portfolio if you're applying to grad school. All those portfolios look completely different, but the same concepts arise. So make sure to subscribe and let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.